Hey everybody, welcome back to the Screencast Lecture Series. Today's topic is air pressure in the troposphere. This is an introductory lecture. First, to understand air pressure, it's a good idea to know what pressure is itself. So what is pressure? Well, pressure is defined as the amount of force that is exerted by contact against an object. So you can see this diagram uh, located. Let's see, how do I get my... Ah, here we go. This diagram located right here. You can see that there is a force being applied over a given area. So force over a given area is pressure. Here is a formula that you can use to calculate pressure. So here you can see is the force divided by area, and that equals pressure. Here is a sample problem. So let's say we have a 20-pound object, and it is applying a force over a 4-square-foot area. What is the pressure? First, you're going to write the formula. So pressure is equal to force divided by area. Then you're going to plug and chug. So first you need to write the amount of force. The amount of force is 20 pounds. The area upon which that force is applied would be 2 foot times 2 foot because area is equal to length times width. So 2 by 2 would be 4 square feet. And once you have this, 20 pounds divided by 4 square feet, I would definitely recommend using a calculator to do that. 20, oops, 20 divided by 4 is equal to 5. So the correct answer is 5 pounds per square foot. And you should then circle your final answer. So 5 pounds per square foot. You have the formula, you have how you figured out the formula, and you have the correct answer, which is 5, and then you have the correct unit, which is pounds per square foot. And then circling the final answer, there you go. Now here's something to think about. Let's say, let's say the force remains the same. Can you increase pressure even though the force remains the same? Well, yes. If you apply that same force over a smaller area, pressure will increase. That's why if you get stepped on by somebody wearing a high-heeled shoe versus somebody wearing a flatter shoe, the high-heeled shoe is going to hurt quite a bit more because you have all of this weight, let's say it's 50 kilograms, all that weight is being distributed over this, this little tiny area versus all the same amount of weight over a much larger area. It's going to hurt quite a bit more to be stepped on by a high-heeled shoe versus a flatter, wider shoe. Another way to think about this is you probably have noticed that like if somebody pushes their elbow into you, there's quite a bit of pain. I mean, they can push down, it really hurts, and that's because your elbow is pointy and all of that force is being applied on that little tiny area. So that hurts quite a bit versus if somebody takes their flat palm and pushes on you, it doesn't hurt nearly as much, even if it could be the same amount of force. The elbow with the smaller area is going to have a lot more pressure and hurt even more. Now, how does this relate to atmospheric pressure? So what is atmospheric pressure? A good way to think about this is to first acknowledge, does air have weight? Because to have pressure, you need to have a force. You need to have a force over a certain amount of area. So does air exert a force? Does air exert weight? And you, So yes, air does have mass. Earth's gravity pulls on the mass of the air, and the weight that you feel is air pressure. So if you're standing here, all this air is going to be pulled down on top of you. Now, a good way to think about this is I remember when I was a kid, we used to play a game where one guy would have the football and everybody else would have to chase around and try to tackle him. And whoever, so whoever had the ball would get tackled. Now, what would happen often is you would get these big pile up of people. Like, for example, this guy here is getting piled up on by all of these other players and so of this group who has the most weight on top of them well this guy does because he has all of these people stacked up on top of them so it's kind of like that when you're talking about air pressure so if you imagine just a stack of marshmallows now an individual marshmallow of itself doesn't weigh very much but if we take one marshmallow and then we just start stacking up more and more marshmallows so you can imagine an infinite number of marshmallows stacked up so as time goes by 
more and more marshmallows get stacked up. So what's going to happen to the bottom marshmallow as the stack keeps getting stacked up higher and higher and higher and higher? What do you think is going to happen to that bottom marshmallow? Well, yeah, it's going to get squished, and it's going to get squished due to the great weight of that stack up on top of it. So even though one individual marshmallow doesn't weigh a whole lot, if you have thousands and thousands of marshmallows stacked up on top, it's going to be quite a bit of weight at the bottom of that stack. So, so what would the weight be like way up here at the top of the stack? Well, compared to the bottom of the stack, there's not very much weight at all. So very, very low weight here, very, very high weight here at the bottom of the stack. And somebody's at the door. Fantastic. Hold on. Air pressure is going to work in a similar way. As you go up into the atmosphere, higher and higher, pressure is going to decrease because you have less total air above you weighing down on you. So this guy here is experiencing low air pressure. This guy is experiencing higher air pressure in compared to this guy. Actually, you know what? There's an extra star here. You don't need to write this star right here. You don't need to write this down. But... Why do you think this guy up here would be unhappy? Well, since there is very, very little air up here for him to breathe, he's going to have a hard time to breathe. He's going to be very uncomfortable. This guy, no problem. Be able to breathe plenty fine, plenty air down there, plenty of oxygen for him. Now, let's apply the same idea to depth and water, like in the ocean. So if you see these two fish, which fish is going to be under more pressure and why? So is it going to be fish A or is it going to be fish B? As you go down deeper and deeper and deeper under the ocean, what is going to happen to the amount of water pressure? This would be a good question to know. Now, the answer is the blue fish is going to be under more pressure than the red fish. This is because there is more total water weight above the blue fish than there is above the red fish. So here you see a column of air. If you can imagine this is all a bunch of air stacked up stacked up on top of one another, this space right here on the surface is going to have more pressure on it because it's going to have more force over the same amount of area. So the pressure here is going to be less because it only has this amount of air on top of it versus this one. It has all of this air up on, up on top of it. And here we see our two friends again. This guy up here has very little air above him. This guy has plenty of air above him and plenty of air around him to breathe. So what's going to happen for in terms of density is the air is going to be more dense close to the Earth and much less dense as you rise higher and higher up into the atmosphere. So who is going to have more trouble breathing, the red man on top or the green man down low in the atmosphere well of course the man up high this this guy up here the red guy is going to take in less total oxygen every time he takes in a breath than the green man and it doesn't matter how hard he tries you can try you know breathing as hard as you can but you can only get so much air in because there's only so much air around you so you are going to get less oxygen and you are going to have a much more difficult time breathing so if you're up here on this top of this high mountain this guy is going to have a much more difficult time breathing than this guy down here. And this also explains why it gets much colder as you go higher up into a mountain. The atmosphere, there's just less of it. I mean, there's, there's less particles, and so there's going to be less total thermal energy because there's less particles of air. And if you remember this from last year, we actually learned that last year about thermal energy. You can increase thermal energy in two ways. One, you can increase the motion of the particles you can make them move faster that's going to increase thermal energy or you can increase the total number of particles themselves that's going to increase thermal energy as well so even if the particles are moving the same speed up here as they are down here there's still more total thermal energy down here because there's more particles of air that's why it's going to be warmer down here than it is up there hopefully that makes some sense now these men are climbing mount everest this is the world's tallest mountain they're doing it in july so this is summertime what special gear are they going to need to climb and deal with these high altitudes. Now, knowing what you know, you should be able to have some guesses what they're going to need. They're going to need things like warm winter clothing, even though it's July, because it's going to be much, much colder way up there in the mountain. And it's easy for me to be up here saying, hey, I'm up here. And you're also going to need oxygen tanks, because the air is not going to have enough total oxygen for you to breathe comfortably. 
Now, that causes a few problems. Like, for example, you have to bring all these air tanks up, and people work hard. They bring these air tanks up there. And after they finish climbing the mountain, they're tired, and they're like, hey, I'm not bringing these air tanks home. I'm not going to bring them back down with me. And you start getting all kinds of junk left over. So Mount Everest is actually becoming one big, gigantic trash heap now where people are leaving all their equipment because they don't bother bringing it back down. And you can also see this effect, like, for example, football players. You might see if, uh, watching a football game, you'll see them on the sidelines, sometimes breathing in oxygen, and especially if they're playing in places like Denver, Colorado, which is very, very high. They do call Denver the Mile High City because its altitude is significantly higher than it is around here. And these players who are not used to playing up in high altitudes, they could have a very difficult time breathing. And we can see this effect when we are flying on commercial airliners. Like, for example, at the beginning of the flight, you may, if you've ever been on an airplane, you may recall the uh, flight attendant telling you how to use these breathing masks. Cabin becomes depressurized. There's just not enough atmospheric air and oxygen for us to breathe, and you will not remain conscious. You would actually pass out because there's not enough air for you to breathe. <laughs> okay, hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, please let me know. Put them in the comment section or let us know in class. See ya! Be careful, kids! Bye! Ow! <laughs>